work in the conservative forces. The title says it right there, so you got to do it. So how do you know if a force is conservative and what is work? So let's just review work really quick. Uh, suppose I have some path right here. So I have some force function. Force is some function f of x in the x direction plus f of y that's a y, in the y direction. So I'm only going to do this in two dimensions for now. We can do three dimensions later. And I want to go from point A to point B, A to B, along some path like that. Who cares what it is? I, don't, I mean, I do care, but it's not right now. We can calculate the work as the integral from A to B of f dot dr, where dr is the vector dx x hat, plus dy y hat. And then you can find, you have to know something about the path, so you can know something about these limits of integration and replacing stuff. It's not really important. And the important thing is that the, the number one thing that we could say is that if I go this way, and then I go, let's put an arrow, and then I go this way, if the field, the force, is conservative, then the work done does not depend on the path. It only depends on the points. Another way of saying that is that the work uh, from A to A of F dot dr is zero. So the work around a closed loop is zero. And we use this. This is where the loop rule comes from, right? In uh, electric circuits is that uh, the electric field's conservative. So the voltages around a closed loop is zero. Okay, so let's just look at some fields and see if we can kind of estimate whether they're conservative or not. And then we'll come up with a test for conservativeness and then we will check that. So here's the first field. I, I printed these out with Python. Here's just a, a field in the y direction. So actually I have a function right there, f of f is negative c y hat. There's no x component. Now, if I, if you imagine taking uh, a point right there and going in a simple box, I mean, do you think I'm going to get zero work? Well, yeah, right, because I'm going to get zero along here. I'm going to get some negative value, I mean, some positive value right there, zero. And then since the force is constant, I'm going to get the exact opposite thing when I go up there and the work is zero. That's conservative. Here's another one, which you can't quite see. Uh, x, x hat minus b, y hat. So there is a change in the x direction, but not in the y direction. This was not so obvious, so I'm not going to answer it right now. We can kind of guess. Um, but let's just, let's just see if we can pick a box. If I pick a box like this. Well, the y component of this is constant. So this and this have some work done. They can have some work done. But you'll notice that uh, the x component along these two paths uh, are, are symmetric. So in this particular case, the work done along this path is zero and that path too. What about this path? Well, it's going to be some positive value. I'm assuming I'm going that way. But then I'm going to get the exact opposite over here. So I think this one is conservative. Uh, here's one that's not conservative. Imagine that I pick, let's pick a circle because this is the y x hat minus x y hat. If I pick a circle, you can see that I'm going to get a positive work, right? I'm always going to, I can move always in the direction of the field. And if I do that, I get back over here and I would, there's no way I could have a zero work. Okay, let's just go ahead and consider um, how to determine. And yes, so if the curl of a function is zero, then the work, then it's conservative. That is true. And I want to show that. Okay, so let's imagine that we have some force field, F. So f equals some function fx, x hat, plus, that's a hat, plus fy, y hat. And so this could be a function of x and y, that could be a function of x and y, but there's no z components. Now imagine that I, that I want to move around in a small square, a width delta x by delta y. Uh, and so I, I have this function around here, let's just go this way. Um, which way should I go? I'm gonna go this way. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and I wanna write the total work. So if I'm gonna go from here to there, this is the point, let's call this point x zero, y zero. Uh, and 
if delta x and delta y are small, I can approximate the force as being constant along this path. And so I'll use the force at these middle points for those of constant values. So on leg one, F is going to be equal to, I can write that, the X coordinate right there, it's going to be F of X, and the, the values that I'm going to put in there are uh, the X values X zero, and the Y value is, I can just say F, right? Okay, let's, let's not, let's just write out the whole work. Let's skip that part. So let's just write the work uh, as the work along this path. Well, what's the force? First of all, I should have some force, maybe who knows what it looks like, but like that. But when I take, if I'm moving in the Y direction, the only thing that's gonna matter is the Y component. So I only need to worry about the Y component of the force. That's why I don't wanna write that down. So the Y component of the force is gonna be FY, and I'm gonna put in the value at the center point, which is X zero, and then Y zero plus delta Y over two. And then I need to multiply that by delta Y, right? Because that's my path that I go. So that's the work along part one. Now let's do part two. I'm gonna only deal with the X component. So it's gonna be plus, that's a Y, plus F X. And the X component here is gonna be X zero plus delta X over two, right? It's halfway. And the Y component is gonna be Y zero plus delta Y. And then I multiply that by delta X. Now going from here to there, I'm going in the negative y direction, so I get negative fy, and my y, my function is gonna be evaluated at x zero plus delta x, right, because that's over here, and then this is gonna be y zero plus delta y over two. And I'll multiply that by delta y. And then finally I'm gonna go this way, and I'm going in the negative x direction, so I get minus fx, and the x value is gonna be x zero, and x zero plus delta x over two. And then the y value is gonna be y zero. And then I multiply that by delta x. So there's my function. Now we're gonna do a trick. I'm gonna, this is my whole thing right there. All of that, I just wrote it up, up and down so that it wouldn't take up as much space. I'm gonna divide both sides by delta x, delta y. So if I'm gonna multiply this by one over delta x, delta y. Let's write that out. Okay, so I get uh, work over delta x delta y. It's gonna be equal to this term. The delta y is gonna cancel. I'm gonna have one over delta x. So I have one over delta x times f y of, yeah, that's right, uh, x zero, y zero plus delta y over two. That's a y. I'm very sloppy with my x's and y's right there, right, it doesn't have the delta y, it's one over delta x now. This one's gonna be plus f x of x zero plus delta x over two, y zero plus delta y, and then this is gonna be one over delta y, and then I'm going to get the next term right here, minus f y, x zero plus delta x, y zero plus delta y over two, one over delta x, and then my final term, I'm running out of room here, I get minus fx, x zero plus delta x over two, y zero, just y zero, one over delta y. Okay, now I'm gonna combine terms, right? I'm gonna get this one over delta y and this one over delta y. And then I'm gonna get this one over delta x with this one over delta x. Let's put those two together. Oops, that's a blank, not a blank sheet of paper. Okay, so let's move that right there so we can see it. Okay, so I'm just gonna write this as uh, work over delta x delta y. And I'm gonna get the delta x's together. So I'm gonna write this as uh, f y that was Fy, right? Yeah. Fy, x0, y0, plus delta y over two. And then the other delta x term I have is over here, minus Fy, x0, 
plus delta x y0 plus delta y over 2, all of that over delta x. Now the other term I'm going to get over here is, are these two, I'll write it down below, uh, plus fx times uh, x0 plus delta x over 2, y0 plus delta y, uh, and then I have this other term right there, minus fx x0 plus delta x over 2, uh, y0, and all of that's over delta y. Okay. Got it? Okay, so we got those two terms. Now, this, you'll notice, just look at this. This is the, the y component of the force, the y component of the force. x0 is changing, and we're dividing by delta x. Y's, the y term is constant, right? So we're not changing the y's. We're increasing the x by delta x and dividing by delta x. That look, should look familiar. And down here we have the x component of the force. We're not changing the x value, but we're increasing the y value by delta y and dividing by delta y. That is a derivative. That's a partial derivative, right? So if I want to say the partial, let's just write this out, the partial of fx, I'm sorry, of fx, let's say with respect to y, how would I do that? Well, I'd say, well, how does the function fx change and with respect to y? And I would divide by that. So I'd say, uh, that's going to be f x at some value x0 y plus delta y minus f x of x0 y. All of that over delta y. That's my definition of a derivative. And that's exactly what I have right there, right? Except that I have this. No, I have it, I have it right. So that is... That is partial of f with respect to y. Now this one up here, this is negative, right? Because here I have the x and then I have the delta x on the wrong side. So I need to swap. No, wait, this one I need to swap. It's final minus initial. No, this one, this one I need to swap, right? Because I have the x0 over here, so I need that one backwards. So the whole point is this. The work is delta x, delta y, equals this term, which is, well, let's write this one as the partial of fx with respect to y, that's a partial, minus the partial of fy with respect to x. That's important, right? Because we said that if the work around that block is zero, it's conservative. So this work would be zero. It doesn't matter that we divide by that. So this is zero. If that is zero, then our force field is conservative. So the partial of the f with respect to y minus partial of f with respect to x. Now, this is, we're going to look at this in these examples. This is part of the curl function. Okay, so let's review the curl. Remember that del, this or um, I call it del, the del operator looks like this. The partial with in Cartesian coordinates. The partial of x with respect to x, the partial with respect to x, x hat, plus the partial of uh, y, y hat plus the partial with respect to z, z hat. So if I take del cross f, which is the curl, it's going to be the determinant of the matrix x hat, y hat, z hat. And then I have to put in uh, the operator, partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z. And then I have my, X, my forces, fx, fy, fz. And so you get a vector from here. If we're in two dimensions, though, our curl, the only thing that we get is the z component. So if I cover up this and I call the z component uh, curl f z component, it's going to be equal to this times this, which is going to be the partial of fy with respect to x minus, minus, the partial of fx with respect to y. That's exactly what we have, okay? So that means if that's equal to zero, if del cross f z component is equal to zero, it's conservative. 
Okay, let's do that for these vector fields. Here's the first one. Okay, so here I have the function uh, negative c. I put a c there uh, times y hat. So if I take the partial of fx, I'm sorry, partial of fy, partial of fy with respect to x minus the partial of fx with respect to y. Let's do that. So here I have no 0 times x hat. So fx is 0. And then if I take the partial of this with respect to x, I get 0 and then minus 0. So they're both 0. Right? There's no x component there. It's a constant. I take the partial, I get, I get the derivative of 0. So that's conservative. Uh, hello. We kind of knew that already. No big deal. Now here I have this one. I should write that out. f equals cx x hat minus b y hat. So the partial of f y, is that the right? I always get that backwards. It doesn't really matter. Partial of f y with respect to x is going to be equal to this component. I take the derivative of that with respect to x, it's 0, right? Because it has no x component. The partial of fx with respect to y is also 0. There's no y in my x component. So I have 0 minus 0 again, conservative. Next, this one. So let me write that again, uh, just so you can see. f equals cy x hat minus cx y hat. The partial of fy with respect to x. Here's my partial, right? So I have an x there. It's negative cx. So if I take the derivative of negative cx with respect to x, I get negative c. And then over here, the partial of fx with respect to y is c. So now if I take this minus that, I get negative 2c. Not conservative. Not. Next one. This one, it's harder to tell, right? I have, actually all I did was take out the minus sign. So here I have cy x hat plus cx y hat. The partial of f y with respect to x is going to be c. The partial of f x with respect to y is equal to c. And now this minus that is zero. Conservative. It doesn't look it, but it is. Okay, and it's funny because all I did was remove the minus sign and it goes from not conservative to conservative. Okay, one more. Here I have cx, cx x hat plus cy y hat. And, you know, you could probably guess that this one's conservative because you could draw a circle around here and see that uh, the force would always be perpendicular to the path and so it'd be zero work. But let's do it. Partial of f y with respect to x is going to be equal to f y with respect to x is 0. The partial of f x with respect to y is also 0. It's conservative. There you go. Conservative forces. The end.